I watched it on the TV Machine guns Fire towards the ground Watch the people run Helicopter gunship Strafing the street Watch them lining up the bodies In the Baghdad heat They say these leaks had consequences And I must agree When I saw them fire on the children It affected me I thought, what if I were wearing The other shoe If I had a hammer what would I do? I am just a person Like anyone I am just another Mother's son I have no special powers I cannot fly Not like that helicopter gunship Up in the sky Sending all those bullets all around To the journalists and children on the ground I am just one man, that's very true But if I had a hand, what would I do? Sometimes I try to wonder Why should I care? But then the answer seems so obvious There are people down there And right here in Queensland There's an army base And there's a helicopter gunship Just sitting in place There's a time for watching there's a time to act It's just gonna kill more children If it remains intact I am just one person But you are too If you had a hammer What would you do? If you had a hammer What would you do? My name is John Riley. I'll have your ear only a while. I left my dear home in Ireland. It was death, starvation, or exile. When I got to America, it was my duty to go. Enter the army and slog across Texas to join in the war against Mexico. And it was there in the pueblos and hillsides that I saw the mistake I had made. Part of a conquering army with the morals of a bayonet blade. And there amidst all these poor dying Catholics, screaming children, the burning stench of it all. Myself and two hundred Irishmen decided to rise to the call. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We marched beneath the green flag of St. Patrick, and blazed with Erin Golbra. Right with the harp and the shamrock, and the libertad para la república. Just 50 years after Wolf Tone, 
5,000 miles away. The Yanks called us a legion of strangers, and they can talk as they may. But from Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We fought them in five major battles. Churubusco was the last. Overwhelmed by the cannons from Boston, we fell after each mortar blast. Most of us died on that hillside in the service of the Mexican state. So far from our occupied homeland, we were heroes and victims of fate. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. From Dublin City to San Diego, we witnessed freedom denied. So we formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. We formed the St. Patrick Battalion, and we fought on the Mexican side. Jacob Blake was walking to his SUV. Alton Sterling was selling DVDs. Eric Garner had just broken up a fight. Brianna Taylor was asleep in the middle of the night. Tamir Rice was playing in the park. Elijah McLean was out walking after dark. Dominique Clayton was sleeping in her bed where she was shot by a cop in the back of her head say their names say their names say their names say their names names. Walter Scott was driving to a store Betty Jones was answering her door. Philando Castile was driving home with his girlfriend. Anthony Hill was naked on the grass when he met his end. Ed Selford was walking to his neighborhood. Michael Brown was blown away just standing where he stood. Kendra James was shot to death at a traffic stop by yet another unaccountable killer cop. Say their names. Say their names Say their names Say their names Atiana Jefferson Was playing a video game with her little nephew Gunned down just the same Oscar Grant was celebrating the new year when the shots rang out that everyone could hear Eric Eric Reason pulled into a parking spot not long after that was when he was shot George Floyd was just shopping in a store Micah Xavier Johnson thought he was still at war say their names say their names say their names This for Margot Black, who started the Portland Tenants United organization in Portland. And um, after she was told, after she had, I can't remember how many children she had at the point where her landlady said, um, you can got to find a new place to live. You got like a month or something. And uh, and and she said to Margot, when Margot uh, basically was um, very upset about the situation and feeling forlorn and despondent, she said, oh, you'll be okay. You're just a renter. Ten thousand 
thousand yuppies just moved here. Ten thousand others came last year. The rent has doubled since I moved in. Each month I take it on the chin. Each month I wonder how many more can I stay in Portland before, before I move into my car or end up somewhere behind bars. 10,000 yuppies say don't complain Now that the city is in the fast lane It's just the market and it knows best That's how the bankers built the West So just get rich and you can stay Otherwise just go away There's no room here for us Holding on under the bus I'm just a renter this ain't my town Might as well just burn it down For all I care Ten thousand yuppies think it's great To invest in Portland real estate Keep Portland weird, they like to say But that was over yesterday Of their achievements they're so proud, living lives in some cloud, but unlimited data will get you nowhere if you can't afford to care. I'm just a renter, this ain't my town, might as well just burn it down for all I care. yuppies and on each block they're flipping houses and taking stock where's the next place they can transform tents and mansions the new norm they like TED talks they like greed they like wine bars they like weed they like bike lanes they want more they're the face of the new class war I'm just a renter this ain't my town Might as well just burn it down For all I care For all I care For all I care For all I care, all I care. Yeah. But it's not true. We can control the rents and we can imprison the bankers. It's all possible been done in one small island in the North Atlantic. Iceland is an island with half a million or so Vikings, mostly known for volcanoes, hot springs and fishing, known for its welfare state, for being good and socialistic, certainly not known for being corrupt or nepotistic, but in the USA and Europe, when they were deregulating banks, Iceland's politicians took bribes and joined their ranks. Soon you had a situation one would think just couldn't be. A bank whose debt was worth ten times the country's GDP. When Wall Street imploded, sure enough it spread. Banks all over the world were floating in the red. All over the world, governments made the plan to cut spending and raise taxes on the working woman and working man. The banks were bailed out while the people had to pay. But in Iceland, people thought there must be a better way. And the earth stood still a moment. Fear was struck in every toff. When Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Of course, you're all welcome to sing. Sing along. Folks were in the streets in Reykjavik and just couldn't be ignored. They said this is a debt we Icelanders can't afford. Let's guarantee deposits of all our people, yes indeed. But as for all the speculators motivated by their greed to make really dumb investments, to them Iceland said good luck. Sorry for your losses, but we don't really give a fuck. The 1% all trembled when they took away the trough. When Iceland, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Gordon Brown called them terrorists, said we cannot let this stand. Who do these peacenik blondes think they are in Iceland? 
he threatened isolation, an economy in flames. But the Icelanders said, sorry, but the banks can settle their own claims, though that might be harder for them now that they're under house arrest. Or else they fled the country as they were most unwelcome guests, and now Reykjavik's recovery just makes the fat cats cough. Since Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. If you haven't heard of this example, perhaps there's a reason why the owners of the world don't want this kind of shit to fly. They say we all must pay up in this shakedown by the mob if we can't afford to pay the rent because we don't have a job. They say it's not their problem if we're forever shackled by their debt. We must save the 1% from the fate they should have met. But there is an alternative, though it makes the fat cats cough since Iceland, Iceland told the bankers. Iceland told the bankers. Iceland told the bankers. To fuck off. And Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Iceland told the bankers. Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Stella in the embassy in the only room for seven years that he would ever see guarded by police with cops on every street an unusual situation for the first time you should be when Julian met Stella the time they spent was increasingly within the walls of a little tent where they could have some privacy from the ever-present gaze under which he was spending all his nights and days. When Julian met Stella, there was the chance of grace. Perhaps the president would decide to drop the case. They had two children. Beneath the watchful eyes of the Americans and British and all kinds of other spies. When Julian met Stella, on Embassy Road was before he was abducted and sent to go to Belmarsh Prison. Without a chance to speak, awaiting the extradition that the USA seeks. When Julian met Stella, the folks at the UN and people all around the world spoke out then. This journalist belongs among the free, not in prison for exposing crimes against humanity. When Julian met Stella. Which for everybody who has not paid attention to the world news over the past 24 hours, there's one of the biggest earthquakes in history. It's destroyed much of both countries. Their country was invaded and destroyed. Then they had a baby boy. They sold everything they owned. So they might escape the war zone. They took the Baltic route north and west. It was the one the smuggler said was best. They got as far as Germany. Which is where they had another baby. deadly thing, what some call immigration. England was their final destination. In a crowded van, driving to the port on past Flanders fields, yet another life cut short. Cops on every side, the vehicle surrounded. When the loud crack sounded, mama held her daughter tight in place. Then she saw the bullet hit her face. Mauda was her name. Mauda was her name. Say her name. There are many ways to stop a van. Many ways to do it, they can. Make a roadblock for one. 
If you're under fire, you can use your gun. But all the bullets flew in one direction. At first they denied it, but at closer inspection, the cop was aiming for the driver's head. But he missed and hit the girl instead. Out of was her name. Out of was her name. Say her name. Driver had been hit. How many more? Numbers would be added to the score of those who only wanted to raise a family, but then died on the shores of Turkey. Or somewhere in the desert, or tortured in a prison, or on the bottom of the ocean, at a Baghdad checkpoint, or at a traffic stop, or shot down by a Belgian cop. And Mauda, Mauda. was This one has been very relevant for at least since last February, so still too relevant. alive as long as they live will wonder was there something that could have been done before nuclear winter blocked out the sun after the earth that we once knew was blown asunder at the end of world war three of world war three any pundits who may still be found We'll have heated debates about how the end came round. Was it the Black Sea blockade? When the rush for the end times was made? Or the breaking of promises promised when the wall came down? At the end of World War III. At the end of World War III. As people looked for clean water to drink. As they're dreaming of the days when they had a kitchen sink. Wishing they could try again to talk to belligerent men. Back when we were hanging on the brink. At the end of World War III. At the end of World War III. When everyone has the same thought. Is this what imperial intransigence wrought? Life under occupation or the end of creation? Decisions that decades of lost opportunities brought. At the end of World War III. At the end of World War III, with billions dead or dying, it won't matter. Who was right or who was lying? When civilization has ended, once the last war has descended, only then will there be no one left to die. At the end of World War III, of World War III, as the few left alive. Survey the rubble remaining, wondering how long they'll survive. Too late to question the story 
of expansion or conquest or glory. No time to rewind from the date I'm again arrived. At the end of World War III. At the end of World War III. When the world has gone crazy and it's all becoming clear when they're gunning down our comrades and it seems the end is near as they're loading up the launchers for the tear gas grenades we can take off our bandanas and kiss behind the barricades when, when it's, it's madness all around, around and you, and you can, can see, see this at a glance, glance we will sing and we will cry, we will laugh and we will dance. As they shout their marching orders beneath the helicopter blades, we shall seize the moment for a kiss behind the barricades. They will try to break our spirit, and at times they may succeed, but our love for the world is stronger than their greed. When the building is surrounded and hope begins to fade, in my final hour, a kiss behind the barricades. As the movement grows, there will be hills and bends, but at the center of the struggle are your lovers and your friends. And the more we hold each other up, the less we can be swayed. Here's to love and solidarity and a kiss behind the barricades. Thank you.